Station, warming centers, preventing fires, travel cancellations, prepping your vehicle, icy road tips, helping vulnerable neighbors stay warm. In the next hour, KSAT has you covered. Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. And we know weather is what's on your mind. So starting off the top, we're going to head to Mia Montgomery. And Mia, before you walk us through this, I think it's important that we start with the fact that this should be taken seriously, but this is not going to be a repeat of the freeze in 2021. Yes, exactly. Because of a couple of different things. One, we don't have as much in terms of the intensity of that cold air moving in, not as cold as what we saw back in 2021. So the intensity, the duration, not as bad as a couple of years ago. And also we don't have multiple crippling ice storms pushing across the state of Texas in the coming days. We do have the potential for a little bit of light ice late Sunday and into early Monday. But after that, it's really just more of the cold air that's going to take us into the middle of next week before we finally start to warm things back up. So first, I want to get you a look at temperatures right now and where that cold air is because it is right on our doorstep right now. We're in the 40s, few upper 30s, even some 50s the farther south that you go just south of San Antonio. But take a look just up to our north 20s for places like San Angelo, Midland, as well as Abilene, two degrees right now in Amarillo. We are expecting this colder air to seep into South Central Texas as we sleep tonight. So low 30s already expected here in town by sunrise tomorrow. So that means the back half of the weekend is going to be much colder. Highs just in the mid 30s. That's it for us here in San Antonio. Increasing cloud cover. It will be a bit breezy. So that also means wind chills in the 20s are expected. Then it's as we head into late Sunday night and especially early Monday morning where we will have the potential potential to see a little bit of light glaze, some light ice, mainly on elevated surfaces, bridges and overpasses. That's something we'll be monitoring early Monday morning for those that do have to travel on area roadways, but that all moves out by Monday afternoon. Then we're just left with the cold through about Wednesday morning. Hard freezes expected Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. And by the way, Tuesday we could see wind chills in the single digits. So we're going to time all of this out for you, get you really detailed looks at the next several days in the forecast coming up a little bit later on. Thanks so much, Mia. We'll check in with you very soon. So this cold is raising a big question in all of our minds. Is the grid going to be fine? Governor Abbott and ERCOT hoping to ease minds after speaking out about this in Austin. I know a lot of people are concerned. Is the power going to stay on? We feel very good uh, about uh, the status of the Texas power grid and ERCOT to, to be able to uh, effectively and successfully uh, ensure that the power is going to stay on throughout the entirety of this winter storm episode. The governor says grid generators have been inspected and winterized and are ready if needed. He also stressed this is the second fuel source for the grid available and it will be on standby. ERCOT CEO says they'll be monitoring the forecast and demand level over the weekend and will update and advise Texans should anything change. CPS Energy saying they are ready too. The company releasing a statement saying CPS Energy is prepared for winter weather. Facilities are weatherized and crews are on standby. CPS Energy has submitted the required declaration of preparedness for winter weatherization to ERCOT. Weatherization activities are complete to protect critical equipment from freezing temperatures. TxDOT and Bear County Public Works also preparing just in case the roads get icy this week. Yesterday, TxDOT made sure its brine trucks are ready to help defrost any icy roads. Bear County Public Works also says it is tracking the weather. A spokesperson for the county tells us trucks and equipment are prepared to pre-treat bridges and other structures for ice in Bear County. Now to our other major story tonight. We are learning three migrants have died near Shelby Park in Eagle Pass. The Department of Homeland Security confirming just over an hour ago a woman and two children drowned in the Rio Grande River near the park. Border Patrol officials saying a group of six migrants was attempting to cross the river when the drownings happened. Border Patrol personnel were forced out of the park earlier this week under the order of Governor Greg Abbott. Abbott saying he wants to make it clear that Texas will be a tough place to enter illegally. DHS says during this deadly incident, Texas officials physically barred Border Patrol agents from entering to respond. They call the situation dangerous and say the state of Texas should stop interfering with federal enforcement of U.S. law. Governor Abbott has not released a statement since these deaths. President Biden has asked the Supreme Court to intervene. 
Tragedy at the border is something the Eagle Pass Fire Dep Department is all too familiar with. Its chief says the number of calls to help migrants continues to spike. He tells the night team's Daniela Ibarra more needs to be done to give them some relief. Eagle Pass has seen wave after wave of migrants. It's been hard for Fire Chief Manuel Mello's department to stay afloat. Two weeks ago, we had to implement our, uh, our, our uh, policy where we do a uh, treatment no transport. Since last spring, Mello says the migrant surges have only gotten worse. We're doing up to 50 calls a day. We usually, on a normal day, probably about 27, 30 calls a day. So an increase of about 20 calls and all migrant related. They had to get a fifth ambulance specifically to respond to calls along the border. Mello says the injuries he's seen on the men, women and kids who cross over can be severe. We went to the river's edge to pick up a patient. That patient had a broken femur. The the person had been in an accident in Mexico and still crossed. Some don't make it over. We've had up from January up to December 3rd, we had 43 drownings. 12 of those were minors 15 years and younger. A humanitarian crisis in the city's backyard. Mello says the toll has become too much for even his toughest guys to bear. One day out of the blue, he just said, I'm tired of, of going out there. I'm tired of, of seeing uh, dead people. That, that really hits home. While the state and feds clash over how to address the problem, Mello prepares for the next surge. I'm hoping that it, it, it completely stops, but uh, then again, history has told us that it's not so. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Back to the weather. Now, the way weather impacts our roads this week is likely one of your top concerns, but we talked to experts in three completely different fields who are all in agreement. They're worried about another type of accident. The night team's Avery Everett looked into the increased number of motor vehicle pedestrian accidents across San Antonio and what specialists are saying we can all do to change those statistics. A common sight in every corner of San Antonio. People crossing, even in places they're not supposed to. That's when trouble can happen. And then cars closely passing by. And that's a shame. Uh, and, and we keep trending upward. SAPD reports this problem to only be getting worse. We requested the data for these motor vehicle pedestrian accidents for 2022 and 2023. The total accidents in 2022 were 781, and that number jumped to 2023 with 841 total accidents. Now that's a 60 crash increase between the one year, and when you break it down month by month, in 2022, the highest month was October for those crashes. And in 2023, the highest month was December. We live in a society now where we're kind of glued to our uh, phone and unfortunately, we're not paying attention to what's going on with our surroundings. Mark Alonzo owns Ayala Driving School. He says San Antonio's stats for motor vehicle pedestrian accidents are not surprising. No, not at all. Behind the wheel, he says drivers can lower the chances of these accidents by staying alert, dropping their speed, and looking out for people crossing outside of intersections. We do a very poor job of enforcing our jaywalking ordinances. Even hospitals are noticing this trend. And Jennifer Northway at University Health says there's responsibility for people out there walking too. We need our eyes and our ears um, to help us be aware of potential hazards around us. With a crash that can happen so quick, doctors and drivers say we need to slow down to stay alert. Trying to change the statistics for 2024. And the concern for these crashes is only on the rise with expected weather this weekend and into early next week. So if you have to hit the roads, what are some of the best recommendations? That driving instructor says that if you do have to drive over the next couple of days to make sure you take it slow and avoid any bridges or overpasses. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. Our coverage continues after the break. The warning San Antonio fire crews are putting out ahead of this winter storm and what you can do to keep your home and yourself safe. As we get this big shot of winter, a few warnings are coming in that could save lives and homes. The night team's Garrett Berger talked with the fire department about how you can make sure that things don't heat up too much. 
With the cold come attempts to stay warm, which can sometimes lead to too much warmth. Do you see a bigger increase in fire danger when the weather gets cold? Absolutely. We talked with the San Antonio Fire Department about some of the common home heating safety issues. It's really that the thing we always say, and I say it all the time, predictable is preventable. And space heaters are one of the most predictable culprits. To use your space heater safely, don't plug it into a surge protector. Instead, put it directly into the wall outlet and keep it away from flammable objects like blankets. And when you're done and ready to leave the room, don't just turn it off. Also, unplug the entire thing. Same thing goes if you wanna to go to sleep. At that point, you don't wanna have the space heater on. You just wanna rely on blankets. And using your stove or oven to heat your house is definitely a bad idea. Not only is it a fire safety hazard, it can be a carbon monoxide poisoning hazard. It's an electrical oven, obviously you don't have the carbon monoxide issue, but you still have that fire hazard. It's, um, it's one of those things, so we, we encourage everyone just to use the blankets. Chimneys over wood fireplaces should be professionally cleaned to avoid creosote buildup. And whether you have a gas or wood fireplace, make sure the flue is open before you light the flame. And if you end up needing a generator, keep it away from your house and never in the garage or near your HVAC system. The key thing is it's going to be cold, it's going to be miserable, but we just got to stay warm and stay safe. Garrett Berger. KSAT 12 News. Good information there. Taking a look outside with live cam. It's 50 degrees, but it is dropping rapidly. And Mia, it was it's pretty crazy today. We talk about preparation. South Texas knows how to prepare. We saw some cleared out HEB shelves. Yeah. There were people had lines around the corner for propane. And uh, I actually went, we went to the store today just to get some weather stripping and no there, other stripping. There was none available. Pretty much cleared out. Yeah, yeah, I imagine that everybody across South Central Texas mm -hmm. and really the state with these cold right. temperatures moving in, just doing everything that they can to prepare mm -hmm. because, yes, very cold, frigid air is on our doorstep and it's going to be moving through over the next several hours and much colder into the weekend is expected. So hopefully you have finished all of your hard freeze preparations, the four P's, people, pets, plants, and your pipes, all of those needing to be protected here as this cold air makes its way into the region. So Let's get you another check at where that is right now. So now we're down to the upper 40s officially in San Antonio over at the airport. You take a look farther up to the north. Now 30 in Waco, 26 in Dallas, 15 in Wichita Falls. Look even farther up to the north. No, though, well below zero for places like Omaha, Minneapolis, even up into Bismarck, minus 19 right now, feeling even colder when you factor in some of the wind. Not going to get nearly that cold here in south central Texas, but definitely needing to make sure that we have taken all of those hard freeze precautions because we are expecting hard freezes as early as Monday morning into Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning of next week before we finally start to crawl out of the freezer and warm things back up. By the way, where those colder temperatures are, especially across portions of the Rockies near Salt Lake City, even Boise and Denver, some snow making its way farther off to the south as well as the east. That's where some winter storm warnings are. Wind chill warnings into the central plains, even blizzard warnings across uh, portions of Minnesota there and just north of Omaha, Nebraska. For us here in south central Texas, you may have seen it on social media or even got an alert on your phone that we had a winter weather advisory that's been issued for our region. This will go into effect 6 p.m. tomorrow, running through noon on Monday for the potential to see a little bit of light ice. Ice. Really accumulations up to about a tenth of an inch. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Really more of a travel nuisance of anything. Again, really bridges and overpasses are what we'll be monitoring with that. We'll get to that timeline in just a second. I want to talk about though the cold because that's what's going to be affecting everybody here over the next several days. It's going to be moving through portions of the hill country, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, Rock Springs pretty shortly. Moving through that area by about one o'clock in the morning through San Antonio by 3 a.m. And then I think by sunrise tomorrow it's pretty much cleared the southern reaches of our area so a much colder back half of the weekend is expected around 31 here in town first thing tomorrow morning Mid 30 is just expected into the afternoon. That's it. Wind chills in the 20s when you factor in a bit of a breeze. And then here come those hard freezes Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday. Mid 20s Monday, and then upper teens and low 20s by Tuesday and into Wednesday. So let's talk about that arrival, especially when it comes to your Sunday. You can see by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, again, low 30s here in the Alamo City, points northward. We are expecting that light freeze just above that, though, the farther south. 
south and west that you go. By 10 o'clock, still right around that 32 degree mark here in town, we rise above it into the afternoon, 35 the forecast high. And then once again, tomorrow evening is when we're expecting those temperatures to drop below freezing yet again. And then you can see they're just going to continue to tumble as we head into the overnight by wake up time Monday. There's that hard freeze expected for most of us. And that is the window where we will be watching for a little bit of light freezing drizzle, some freezing rain really by I think nine o'clock tomorrow night. That's when we could start to see some of that develop. Chances increase pre sunrise on Monday and into early Monday morning. It's not going to be for everybody. Better chances the central portions farther north and east that you go there as well. And here's the thing. Accumulations are expected to be light. So really what we're going to need to monitor by Monday elevated surfaces for a little bit of a light glaze, maybe a few slick spots on bridges as well as overpasses. Monday is a holiday, which by the way, if you're going to the MLK March, please dress very, very warmly with wind chills in the teens early Monday. If you do have to be on the roads, though, again, especially on those bridges, overpasses and ramps, do be extra careful. We could find a few slick spots that all moves out by Monday afternoon, and then we're just left with the cold by Tuesday and Wednesday. By the way, Courtney, Tuesday morning, wind chills in the single digits possible before we finally start to warm things up really by Wednesday afternoon. Bundle the kiddos going back to school yes. on Tuesday. Yes, and the MLK March is on. We'll hear about that a little bit later in the show. Now let's head to Nick. Nick, the Houston Texans had a huge wild game, wild card playoff game this afternoon. Yeah, Courtney, you could just go ahead and say it was a wild game regardless. <laughs> it was a wild game, it, right? It was absolutely <laughs> insane. We did not predict this is how this was going to go down when it came to this game today. We're not only going to show you the highlights of the Houston Texans taking on the Cleveland Browns in Houston, having a party out there. And then we're also going to get you ready for the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Green Bay Packers and the history between these two teams. You're not going to want to miss it. It's coming up next. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Well, wild card weekend is a wonderful time of year. Could your team be prevailing over an, over an early exit of the playoffs? So the Houston Texans are looking to answer that question, hosting the Cleveland Browns this afternoon. And after the team's traded touchdowns in the first quarter, Kareem Hunt takes a shovel pass straight up the middle through the Texans' defense and in for a touchdown. But how about this answer from C.J. Stroud, dumping it off to Brevin Jordan, who uses his blockers and then turns on the Jets for a 76-yard touchdown and NRG Stadium is going wild. The Texans would take a 10-point lead into halftime, and in the second half, the defense would have some fun. Joe Flacco trying to throw it away, but Steven Nelson picks it off, and he takes this one 82 yards to the casa as the Texans dominated this wild card game, winning 45-14, to and C.J. Stroud passed Michael Vick as the youngest quarterback to win a playoff game. So how does that feel? It's, it's cool, man. It's really cool. I mean, I put a lot of hard work in. My teammates do, um, and it's cool to see the fruits of your labor come come to be true. So, um, I'm super blessed to be um, considered with a great name like Michael Vick, who was my favorite quarterback growing up. So, um, I'm, I'm super blessed, and hopefully, I can make it too. The Texans will have to wait to see who wins Monday night's AFC Wild Card game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills to see who they're going to play next week. Now to the Dallas Cowboys, who we all know coming into tomorrow's playoff game against the Green Bay Packers, they got some history. The Des Bryant catch, that wasn't. The third and 20 pass from Aaron Rodgers, and so on and so on. But when it comes to these teams and this year's matchup, the young quarterback versus the vet. You got head coach Mike McCarthy playing against his old team that he led to a Super Bowl win in Cowboy Stadium in 2011. Pick a storyline, any storyline, because this game is full of them. But one part of the game plan that might not be talked about as much is the fact that the Packers, they, they struggle against tight ends. They're playing 23rd in the league, giving up 50 plus yards against tight ends on average per game. Take this play against the Los Angeles Chargers in week 10. The Packers playing a ton of zone defense right here, opening up a lane for Stone Smart to make a man miss and just take it to the end zone. Big gains for the big guys this year. And Cowboys tight end Jake Ferguson, well, he said that he's pretty focused on making sure the Cowboys get further in the playoffs this season. 
think something important that we always talk about is you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So you know what, no matter gets, what, what gets thrown at us, we got to be prepared. We got to be on our P's and Q's. We got to trust in our scheme. We trust in our training. At the end of the day, there's only one team who wins this thing. And to be on the other side, I haven't felt. I don't know what that's like, but I know it's going to take a lot of work. I know it's going to take dedication through everything I'm doing on the field, off the field, um, the choices I make, what I put in my body. It's, it's all the little details. That's what's going to get us to that spot. Ferguson and Cowboys will kick off against those Green Bay Packers tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Coming up a little later in the broadcast, we're not only going to show you the San Antonio Spurs tough loss to the Chicago Bulls, but we're also going to talk about head coach Steve Sarkeesian of the Texas Longhorns in that four-year contract extension. You know I love it. Yeah, of you course. You know I love it. Of course. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Nick. <laughs> Coming up next in our next half hour, the goal was to collect 1,000 items to keep neighbors warm. Our community broke that goal big time. We'll tell you just how many items were donated to help those stuck outside in the cold. Plus, the winter weather isn't just a threat here. How many states are under weather warnings and how this is affecting the airlines after the break?